Hi, I'm Sue from the blog Stories of an Unschooling Family. Welcome to my video. And today I'm going to be interviewing my 16-year-old daughter, Charlotte. I've put a few questions together and hopefully it'll be an interesting video. Okay, Charlotte, we perhaps we'll start by you telling me how long you've been unschooling. Well, we've, we've been unschooling for about as long as I can remember, so I don't think I've ever been taught another way. So you can't remember the days when I had a try of Charlotte Mason or classical um, uh, ways of doing things? No, that was before I started learning. Oh, you're a lucky one. Yeah. <laughs> okay, so uh, do you like unschooling? Yeah, I like having a lot of time to follow my own interests. Well, perhaps you could tell us some about some of those interests. What do you like doing? Well, I enjoy art and music, also writing. Well, you want to tell us a little bit about those? What are you writing at the moment? Well, at the moment I'm preparing for um, another writing challenge during July. So what's that one? Uh, Camp NaNoWriMo, writing a 50,000 word novel in a month. So you've done that a number of times? Yes. And that you enjoy doing that. So tell us a bit about your art. Um, what kind of art do you like? Well, currently I'm exploring digital arts, drawing pictures for um, my sister's novels. Yes. So you're using the computer and a graphics pad? Yeah. So that's uh, something new? Yeah, I hadn't tried it before and I'm really enjoying it. And what about your music? Um, studying for a sixth grade piano exam this year. And what else do you do with music? Also, I have singing lessons and I'm part of a choir. Okay. So, apart from uh, practice like your music and your writing skills, things like that, what do you think that unschooling has taught you? I think it's taught me how to think independently and teach myself, which will come in handy later in life when there are no teachers around to do it for you. So how do you decide what you'd like to do What you know, in a day? How, how, um, no one's telling you what to do, so you, do you just get up and... Um, sort of wander through your day without actually accomplishing much? Well, when I start work for the day, I look through all, all the resources I've got, pick some things that I'd like, I think I'd like to do for that day, note them down, and then if over the course of the day I find that I um, don't know what I want to do next, then I pick something from the list and get on with that. And so I'm not really wasting much time in between activities. So is there certain things in your day that you have to do? Yes, music practices are something that I have to do every day, otherwise I won't be ready for my next lesson. And uh, exams too, hey? Yes. So do you ever learn or have show um, things that are not to do with your three main passions or do you just spend all your time on, on the, those things that really grip you and uh, interest you? and do explore outside of my three main passions, but those are the things that really do interest me. So to say, tell me some of the things that you might do which aren't writing and music and, uh, uh, what was the other thing? Art. <laughs> well, I might um, listen to podcasts on history or watch Shakespeare plays with the rest of the family or do a bit of cooking, none of which are directly linked to my three main passions. So you had, would you say you have a, a wide range of interests? Yes, I would. Yeah, so you're getting a, you would you say you were getting a well-rounded education even though you're following your interests? I think so. Now Charlotte, you're 16 and in a, a few months time you'll no longer be registered as a homeschooler because I mean, in our state of New South Wales only children up to the age of 17 have to be registered. So I guess it's a time when you'll soon be starting to look ahead to think about the next stage of your learning life 
and I guess there'll be a lot of parents at this stage or even earlier who might be getting a little bit anxious about what you might be doing in the next stage. Um, a lot of parents might, with their children, teenagers, might think it's a time to go a bit more structured, get some plans um, drawn up so that uh, you can get into university or get on with whatever else you're doing. So what do you think about that? Oh, I think that it's not really a time to start panicking about what you're going to do next. I'm only 16 and I think I've got quite enough time to figure it out later. I'm not going to die if I don't decide at the end of the year what I'm going to do for the rest of my life. So, so, so you haven't actually thought yet about what you'd like to do? You haven't got any plans yet? I haven't yet got any plans of what exactly I'm going to do, though. This is, um, I suppose, time to follow my interests and see if I'd like to study further on them, make them my um, career. So you think that instead of um, covering all options during the teenage years, so that you're covered to do practically anything you would like at the end, that it's better actually to use that time to explore your interests in depth to see where they might lead? Yes. Okay. So if you do decide that uni university is in your future, it's something that you would like to do to get where you want to go, do you think that you'll be prepared? I think so. Can you tell me why you think that? Because as a university student, you'll have to manage your own time, get your own assignments done, and um, fit in everything without somebody telling you how to do it. So I think that independent learning is something which I've learned and will be very useful later. What about subject matter? Like prerequisites to get onto a course? Well, not doing the HSC, I don't think it's going to be a big problem because nobody else in my family has done it and Open University works just as well so I think I've got just as good a chance of getting into university as anyone else. So tell us about Open University. Well, instead of an HSC you can do a couple of units of Open University which can also prepare you for a university degree which works the same way. Universities will accept it instead. Instead of an HSC, which all the school children have, you've got a couple of units of um, open university and you, that gives you a, a, like a grade or a score and you can use that to get into university. Yeah. And how do you know that works? Because both my two brothers and my older sister have gotten into university the same way. Well, Charlotte, I've Maybe we can talk about um, parents, what their role in unschooling is. So what do you like me to do for you? What, what, how can I help you as an unschooling teenager? Well, resource finding is something that a parent can do because they've got all the experience to um, help you follow interests or find new things for you to try. So that's really good. And so you don't mind me offering you resources? No. And um, I can always say I don't want to try it, but it's good to have somebody else to suggest things. Okay. And um, what else do you, besides resources? Well, Mum's always there to talk to about things and um, to help me if I need it. So I know that if I need help, you will help me. So if you've got a problem or something, you'll come and talk to me about it and you know, I can do my best to help you? Yes. So Charlotte, do you think that unschooling parents should spend time with their, um, with their teenagers? I think so. You can share a lot of things with um, parents and teenagers. So maybe you'd talk about a few things that we share. Well, we all do exercise together. Running is something we all do as a family and we enjoy watching movies and um, reading books aloud together. And we talk a lot? Yeah we do, over the dinner table or just wherever we are at the time. So you enjoy that? Yeah that's fun. So um, yes, yeah, so if the parents and, uh, and teenagers can actually get on well together and uh, um, enjoy each other's company? Yes they can. 
Okay, Charlotte, I'd just like to thank you for uh, answering some of my questions today. I hope our video is alright and that someone comes and watches it. And um, thank you.